Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today we're taking a look at the Cosmic Encounter Power Showdown uh, Part 3. And uh, today's first matchup is Horde versus Sadist Alternate Timeline. So we start off, we, we take a look at Sadist's artwork. Pretty cool artwork, right? We, we got this guy, lots of torches, hacksaw, drill car battery well battery of some sort it looks pretty cool but horde evil scrubber duckies that that's what i'm calling these rubber duckies scrubs yeah scrubber duckies so so i gotta give the uh the artwork point to horde uh, that's just where i'm going here also uh horde has well it works all the time so so it's gonna get the timing window point now, let's get into the power text. Um, Horde, each time you have, each time you draw a card from the deck or retrieve a ship from the warp, use this power. Add a Horde token to one of your colonies. Treat Horde tokens as ships under your control, but discard them if they're sent to the warp. Remove from the game or captured by another player. If you lose this power, Horde tokens remain under your control until discarded. You can, uh, your power cannot be stolen, copied, or separated from your uh, player color through any means. So, basically, it's a way to get extra ships. Is that going to help you win the game? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Now, Sadist... Well, you have the power of cruelty. When another player has at least eight ships in the warp, captured, and or out of the game, place a token under that player's colony marker. At the end of the resolution phase, if all other players have a token under their colony marker, use this power to win the game. You can still win the game via the normal manner. And that was old Sadist. But new Sadist, or alternate timeline Sadist, also adds this. As a main player or ally, after your side wins the encounter, if any players on the other side would lose fewer than three ships to the warp, use this power to force each of those players to lose one additional ship to the warp. And that's just fun. That's uh, that's called add more. So I'm going to give the power points or our, our uh, face-off points here to Sadist. So Sadist has made a nice little comeback. We're here now at 2-2. Uh, two to two, And we got to go through a bunch of stuff. So let, let's talk flavor text. Maybe the least important, but it's been a deciding point here in uh, several matches. Uh, Sadist power, or yeah, flavor text here. A civilization that glorifies inflicting pain in excessively, br excessively brutal rituals. The Sadists barely managed to survive their spacefaring age, desiring to spread the unique form of worship across the many realms of space and time. These beings entered the cosmos with an eager eye for torment and a mind full of uh, cruel creativity definitely paints a picture I'm, I'm, I definitely get that, that visual there uh, Horde on the other hand a little known race from a cosmic backwater the Horde have only one real skill spawning leave a Horde alone in a room for a minute and you'll return to two Hordes avidly chatting with each other Leave them in your house for an afternoon, and you'll return home to find that they've taken over your city. At which point, if you're lucky, you'll have just enough time to flee the planet before they claim it in the name of the Horde race. Well, that makes me think of Tribbles. And uh, we can debate if the Horde is properly named or not, but I'm going to give it to the Horde. All right. The nuts and bolts. Let, let's get into the, the flare here. The Horde Wild, actually. We gotta go over here. The Horde Wild. Uh, during your regroup phase, if there's an unused player color, you may add a ship of that color to one of your colonies instead of retrieving a ship from the warp. If that ship is ever alone on a planet or goes to the warp, it is removed from the game. I mean, that can be okay. That's... Uh, a way to get some extra ships, but I don't 
again, I, I don't know how much that's truly going to do for you. The Sadist Wild is a main player after winning the encounter for each player that was on the opposing side. Draw one card from the deck. That, I think, is going to help you more. So I'm going to give the point to Sadist, and we're here now at 3-3, three to three, going to the Super and letting the Super decide everything. So the Sadist Super... When using your power to force players to lose one ship, they must lose two ships instead. Okay, inflict a little bit more pain. And the Horde Wild, no, sorry, the Horde Super. When you use your power, you receive twice as many Horde tokens as usual. So both of these powers are doubling up. It's just Sadist is using his power to actually win a game, get closer to a win condition. Horde's just getting a whole bunch more ships. Give them the point to Sadist. Sadist is moving on, four to three. And uh, uh, I might be as surprised as anybody that that's what happened. But nevertheless, Sadist moves on. Now next up, we have Cudgel versus maven and uh whew, this this one was weird okay uh you know cudgel base power and one that i admittedly am not a big fan of maven eons power and uh i will freely admit one i have uh, not played uh not not seen in the game, not played at all. So you are going to get my first impressions here, but I'm going to do my best to, to make it as good as possible. So, Cudgel. I've always liked the artwork. I, I like the, uh, the rhinoceros type charging. Uh, I, I enjoy that aspect. Um, Maven, I'm not 100% sure what's actually going on here. I do think it's cooler, but I, I, I do got to give something to the, uh, the cudgel of just being a bit intimidating there. Um, yeah, so I will. Now we'll go to the wild. Uh, actually, I think we can do timing window. Uh, they both work uh, in one phase, but Maven is main player, or sorry, not as a main player or an ally. Uh, Cudgel's also mandatory. Maven is uh, optional, so Maven's going to get the timing window point. So, uh, flares. Well, wild, at least. Uh, the Cudgel Wild, when you gain a colony as the offense, that's uh, here, you may send all ships on that planet belonging to other players to the warp. Ships that were allied with you on this encounter are not affected. I, I, just point blank, the Cudgel Wild is something I I was always worried about. I, I started going, uh, okay, is the Cudgel Wild around? Uh, we know it's around if somebody's playing Cudgel. Uh, and then it's like, okay, got to be careful. Got to watch those foreign colonies um, because I don't want my ships going away. So it's a very powerful. Maven's got a tough, uh, a, a tough setup here. But the Maven Wild, when you are not involved in an encounter, after encounter cards are revealed, you may correct any encounter's outcome by adding 10 to either side. Give this flare to the Maven after use or discard it if the Maven isn't playing. Well, I don't much like not being involved in an encounter. I do kind of like uh, being able to mess with an encounter if I'm not there. But adding or subtracting 10, well, sorry, adding 10 to one side doesn't always do enough. So I, I'm going to give this to Cudgel. Cudgel really is a, a game-shaping wild. Uh, let's go to the power text. So uh, Cudgel... 
Well, let's see if I can make this big enough here. Uh, Kudrow, you have the power to smash as a main player when you would win an encounter in which you revealed an attack card. Use this power to force your opponent to lose extra ships of his or her choice equal to the number of ships you had in the encounter in addition to any ships they would normally lose. You know, I, I, I've been on record. I did my rankings. Cudgel's, I, I believe, was in my bottom 10 of the base set powers. Cudgel is just win more. And I don't have much value in a power like that because it doesn't help me win. It actually makes it harder for me to win. But I'm not going to let that... You know, completely kill the power. Um, but it's going to be tough for me. Or tough for Cudgel here to advance. Uh, Maven's there. But uh, let's, let's go through it. You have the power to be right. If you are not a main player or an ally, after encounter cards are selected, but before they are revealed, you may use this power to take all face-down cards played during the planning phase and stack them on this sheet without looking at them. Then proceed to the reveal phase and discard an attack or negotiate card from your hand to declare the outcome of the encounter. Discard an even-numbered attack card to declare that the offense wins. Discard an odd-numbered attack card to declare that the defense wins. Discard a negotiate card to declare that the main players will try to make a deal. You may not use this power if you do not have an attack or negotiate card. Now remember, this is if you are not a main player or ally. So you are not altering encounters in which you're involved, in which you have something at stake. But that makes you very powerful. At least I would think it makes you very powerful. Um... I like Maven a lot more. Uh, I, I would say if I'm presented with these two, I'm choosing Maven every single time. The only time I wouldn't is if it was a multiplayer, or sorry, multi-power game, and maybe I have something that lets me win, and Cudgel is just going to help me a whole lot more. Uh, let's take a look at the supers because I think that the supers are going to determine a lot here. Uh, the Maven Super. When using your power, instead of placing cards on your alien sheet, you may add them all to your hand. Well, boy, that seems... That, that That's really good. You're just picking up a bunch of cards. It's going to alter the way players choose their encounter cards, but then you just go, no, you, you guys play it out. I don't care. So there there's, becomes a bit more of a double bluff and I, I like that aspect cudgels super whenever you use your power on a player you may affect any of that player's allies also each player you smash loses the number of ships you had in the encounter that's also brutal that that's just bad um, but I'm going to give that to maven cards are power and maven's going to advance now uh, four to two and it's this isn't that I hate Cudgel. Cudgel is... I gave Cudgel a fair shot, but Maven's just better. All right. This lets us advance to the second round. And now we're going to get a retread. Well, Maven versus Sadist. Alternate timeline. Um, well, let's just play this out. I, uh, well, I left the artwork point there for Sadist. I, as, as much as Maven's art intrigues me, I still don't know what's going on. And I, I do like Sadist's art. I, I think that's pretty cool artwork. So I'm giving that to Sadist. Now, I will say, Maven's power, which we don't need to recap here. That's going to get the points. We're, we're going to, to stick with Maven. The, the power to affect outcomes is going to be just a little bit better than uh, winning the game when players lose a bunch of ships. I have been in encounters, or games really, where players play tight with, uh, with their 
ships and you just don't have players losing a lot of ships so that's going to uh, factor in here um, now both of these powers are uh, single phase but maven is a bit more restrictive so with that i'm i'm going to give the timing window to sadist sadist has a lot more flexibility going on here um we're going to look at the flavor text next uh maven's flavor text is tired of offering corrections to lesser species the mavens have decided to skip the middle alien as it were and hasten to the end game declaring correct outcomes in a matter of seconds i get that as somebody who has spent far too much time in meetings with middle management, as it were, and you probably know those kind of meetings, I understand where the mavens are coming from. And you know what? Say less. Maven getting the point. All right. Let's go, let's go look at the wild again. We got the sadist wild. Uh, we got... The Sadist Wild. There we go. Helps if I put it on the right uh, window. Sadist Wild again as a main player after winning the encounter for each player that was on the opposing side. Draw one card from the deck. Uh, again, that's a very good wild. Uh, the Maven's Wild when you are not involved in an encounter after encounter cards are revealed. Add 10 to either side's total. I just I like Sadist more and I want to see this go down to the super. Uh, Sadist Super... Force players to lose two ships instead of one. Maven super, uh, you get cards. We're going cards over ships. Sorry. And Maven's going to advance uh, four, three. It, 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 you know, Sadist is helping it win the game, but Maven's getting cards that is going to help it win the game. So uh, this is both. And again, surprisingly... For power, I didn't know at all. Maven is making it through here. So, like I said, I give every every alien, every power a chance. Um, but yeah. So let's see who's going to meet Maven. Uh, we've got it down between Worm and Kamikaze. Now, Worm got here by default, random seeding. Kamikaze got the auto win over Macron because, well, it's Macron. Uh, so, a worm versus Kamikaze. And, and just kind of looking at the, the artwork, worm, I guess this is a worm. It looks more like a Hydra to me. Uh, Multi-headed beast of all things. Very, um, well, I guess one head. Lots of tentacles. Just ugly looking sucker. Uh, kamikaze. I understand the origin of the word. I understand you got to be careful. This is a bug. This looks more like something out of Star Wars. Uh, not Jabba. The uh, Sebulba the, uh, from Episode 1. I know, don't come at me. I'm the, I was the right age. I was like 10 when episode one came out. Pod racing was cool. I will, I will fight you for that one. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what this guy, uh, harkens in my brain, but I, I don't know. I, I like both pieces of art. Um, worm, eh, maybe something more out of, uh, tremors. No, those guys are even scarier. Kamikaze. I'm not sure that that... that I don't know. I, th this is a tough point for me to give with the artwork. Um, I, I'm going to give the point to Kamikaze. I, and that was uh, tougher than it should have been. Uh, power text. Let, let's... Uh, well, let, let's get back into that. Kamikaze, you have the power of sacrifice as a main player before encounter cards are selected. You can use this power. Send up to four of your ships from any colonies 
to the warp for every ship you sent, you draw two cards. Um, pretty good power. Uh, you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta time it right. You gotta control your ships and you better hope you hit a Mobius tubes because you're going to need those ships back. But, uh, I, I like the flexibility. I, I like card drawing powers. Uh, Worm, on the other hand, uh, you have the power to tunnel, actually, sorry, first in game setup, you get to distribute your ships among your planets, however you wish, as long as you have at least one ship on each planet. Then, as a main player, after encounter cards are revealed, you can use this power to re-aim the hyperspace gate anywhere the offense can have a legal encounter against the defense in any system, as long as the offense does not already have a colony there. All offensive and allied ships move along with the gate, and the encounter continues normally. For the most part, I kind of go, eh, so what, with Worm. Uh, Worm doesn't help you win the game. Worm is just an annoying pain in the butt power uh, that makes the game take longer. So Kamikaze's getting the points. Uh, flavor text or history. Uh, kamikaze, always a close-knit society. The Kamikaze have taken the virtue of self-sacrifice and raised it to an art form. In battle, they are greatly feared for their ability to die explosively at will. But the kamikaze know that when their race rises to cosmic superiority, those who gave their lives along the way will be remembered forever. I mean, it seems, seems like solid history. Uh, worm. Worm's history evolving beneath the rolling sands of the deserts of their home worlds. The worms became adept at mounting surprise attacks and befuddling aggressors. I like the use of the word befuddle. As this fledgling race expands into the cosmos, no alien knows where they will surface next. I like a bit of intrigue. You know what? I'm going to be nice. We're going to give the flavor text to worm. It's a tough call but I like it. Uh, timing window, Kamikaze, as you can see, works in planning. It's main player only, and it is optional. Uh, worm is main player. It's optional. There's really nothing uh, to... Uh, to differentiate them. So, I guess they're both getting the point. Uh, that's going to take us to the wild. So, Worm Wild. At the start of your turn, you may move ships from any of your colonies to one planet in your home system that does not have a colony. So you kind of get a, a power or a, a planet back. And that's, that can be useful. Let you keep your power longer. We like that. Kamikaze, wild is a main player after encounter cards are selected, but before they're revealed, you may send up to four of your ships that are not in the encounter to the warp to add three to your sides total for each ship sacrificed. Kamikaze, wild. Well, that's how you win the game. That's how you uh, give yourself the chance to, uh, to to launch a surprise attack and uh, well to put a total higher than the defense can counter uh, when you don't get the allies that you need or when you do get the allies that you need and you say well my ships are worth more if I can send them away for the for the points so the kamikaze moves on to face maven and well let's have that battle let's rush it let let's get this taken care of um we will uh take this out uh kamikaze's getting the point for art because still don't know what's going on with kamikaze uh, maven's getting the point for timing window because not main or ally is a lot more under your control than just as a main player. Um, power text. 
as much as I like cards, I also like being able to dictate terms of encounters a whole lot more. So we're going two for Maven there. Uh, flavor text. Well, I should I should reread. A uh, kamikaze. Okay, close knit society, self sacrifice, raised to an art form. Got it. Maven. Ah, middle management. Yep, Maven and middle management. Uh, I'm giving the point to Maven for middle management. Kamikaze you had a chance, but uh, the Maven just too strong there. So uh, four to one. The Maven moves on. So the Maven, just like Brute before it and Sorcerer, we are into the uh, the fourth round. That's uh, that's where we're at. So we have gotten ships or ships gotten powers into the fourth round. So next video, we can expect, or well, we will see Converter against Delegator. The winner of that goes up against Butler. And then we get the Changeling versus Animal, Magician versus Tripler. Winners there go up against each other. And then the overall winners will get to play Maven in the fourth round. So we are progressing. It is slow, but we're getting places. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. Truly appreciate it. I hope you're having fun with these. I know it's a bit slow, but we're getting places. So thank you all for watching. Until next time, keep brushing up your game. Take care.